Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio. Jesse, don't call me Uncle Tony. Don't call me that. I don't like the uncle. Um, and if you knew, if you knew that I didn't like it and you did it on purpose, I'm gonna block you. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. Um, we back, man. We are back with another session of that verbal cardio. We got the IG live in here temporarily, but I'm about to, uh, now ain't no disrespect. It ain't no disrespect, but the, you know, the Patreon people get special treatment. They get, spe- they, they, they more special than the IG people. I'm sorry. It's just, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they show and improving. So I got to give them the special treatment, man. I can't treat, I can't treat them like y'all. Now I appreciate y'all in the IG community, but come on, man. Y'all just, Y'all kind of fair with it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all fair with it, kind of, sort of, you know, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But these cats right here, you know, I can't ignore what the patron saints are doing. You know what I'm saying? It's not discrimination. It's just, you know, they they special. It's like those people in your life, man. They, they be showing up for you. They be showing up for you more than other people. And it's like you can't ignore the people that really show up for you for real, for real. And then you're going with the people that kind of show up when everything is going good, this, that, and the third. But they here, they here for the long haul. You know what I'm saying? They helping me fight. You know what I'm saying? They jumping in if I'm getting mopped up. You know what I'm saying? So I, I gotta, I gotta give them the the special. It's not, the, you know what it is discrimination. So what? It is discrimination. What what you finna do with the discrimination? If you if you don't want to be discriminated, come on over to the Patriot Saint side. Sick of it, man. Let's talk about let's talk about what's real. You know what I'm saying? That hurts. Y'all hurt in the IG. Y'all hurt. Y'all don't y'all don't feel where I'm coming from. The Patriot Saints they just they just going the extra mile. Patriot Saints are going the extra mile, man. When you subscribe to something, you want that special treatment. You want to be preferred. It's like an airline. When you when you preferred on the airline, you want the perks. You want the special treatment. You want the you want the benefits. You want to get stuff that other people don't have access to. That's why you joined up for the program, and that's what I'm providing for the patron saints. Y'all didn't join up for the program. Y'all flying on these other airlines willy nilly, so they getting the special treatment. They getting the special treatment. The link is in my bio. Click the link in my bio. The Patreon is right there. The first tab you see, man. All you got to do, if you want to become a patron, patron saint, click the link in my bio. Click that first tab. At the top, it says Patreon. Click that, and you can join up. You can set your own rate. And then, boom, you and the patron saints just like that. We watching movies together. We building. We holding one another. I'll be holding my patron saints close. We be crying. I was crying with y'all. Remember that? We was watching Stranger Things and I folded up and I was like, my bad, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my feet together. I was pigeon toed, crying. Remember that? IG, y'all, y'all wasn't there, but the patron saints was there. I folded up. And then I folded up again. And they was holding me. They was holding me up. I was like a dead fish in the boat. It's not taking pictures with dead dead fish when you catch them. Yeah. Imagine somebody, you dying, right? You're dying. And somebody's like, hey, let's, let's do a photo shoot. And you laying there fighting for your goddamn life. And they taking pictures. Imagine that. You know what I'm saying? You just joined the Patreon? Well, Lieutenant Martinez. Welcome. Hello. Lieutenant Martinez. I assume it's short for lieutenant. You didn't put the whole word in there. Anyway, I gotta I gotta end the live. You know what to do if you want to get in on it. Patron Saints, I'm all yours. Let me thank the supporters real quick. Boom pal. Verbal cardio. We're back. The producer's back in the studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Back up in this. Uh yes, sir. you say my transitions are gold. Thank you. Um it is August. Is this your favorite month? It was. It was? Because your birthday was in? 
Yeah, but October October has always been my Yeah, month. I'm about to say, you've always said October. Yeah. But that's why I said it was. When I was a kid, I didn't know no better. So yeah. I didn't really, like... Look when like, did you switch to October? Uh, once I was no longer in, in school. Because <laughs> October, I was in school. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't as fun. I loved Halloween my whole life. Yeah. But the month of October, I was I was in school. I hated school. Mm. But once I left school, yeah. as an adult, I was like, yo, October is pretty dope. Like, it's fall. You it's left good school weather. earlier than adulthood. No, but I'm just saying, well, you know what I mean. Give, me, a, give, me, give us the numbers. Man. I don't know. You know my memory is not like yours. So it's 17. No. 16. 20. We'll just go with 20. 20? It took a while. Okay, so it wasn't right away. It wasn't right away because October also was like, okay, it's about to snow. But, in New York. But when I was in my 20s, I had the means to go back and forth between warm weather because my mom moved to Florida uh, in my 20s. So, like, mm-hmm. I can avoid the snow, <laughs> but I can enjoy October in, in New Florida? York. In New York. That's what I'm saying. So if you're avoiding the snow, how can you take in Sweetheart, October? Look, this is what I'm saying. It doesn't snow in it doesn't snow in October. What did, what did we talk about back, October. But it took me a while to like October because I knew that snow was coming. Mm-hmm. But in my twenties, I was able to avoid the snow, so I was able to appreciate October more because I knew once December hit, I could be out of here. So, so you didn't appreciate October because you knew snow was coming, even though it wasn't there yet. Yeah. So in your mind, in October, you're thinking like, about the snow freezing. that is yet to come. I was like, man, and that ruined October coming. for you. I was like, the winter is coming. I wasn't even thinking of October's like greatness. Mm-hmm. September, though, I appreciated September air, but I hated that school started in September. Mm. You know what I mean? So it took a while. And then my grandmother's birthday is on October, October yeah. 11th. Mm-hmm. And so, but it took a while. It, it wasn't right away. It wasn't like a... I love October. So before that, it was August. Yeah. It was my birthday. birthday. I didn't have school. Yeah. It was summertime. We were on vacations. Yeah. We we was out. We was either in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, out here in California. We was all over the place. My mom was a traveler. So. I, w- I wonder if I sabotaged October for myself. Why you did that? Did I talk too much shit about, not October, August for myself. I was wondering if I talked too, so much shit about August, God was like, "Oh, my mic's not on." I'm gonna make you the whole the whole time. Y'all ain't heard nothing, Sabrina. Uh, said. This is why I usually do uh, headphones. Let me get my headphones. You don't have much, right? Well, she was talking about October and uh, August. August used to be her favorite month. You can you heard her? Okay, barely, because she was on the in the background. All right, we getting we getting it together. We getting it together. She was off the mic, but we could hear her. But it wasn't crisp. Crisp sounds. That's why I do the headphones. People be like, "Why you do the headphones?" Yeah. Because I gotta hear myself. Okay, but it's low. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Can you hear me now? I'm about to spit. There you go. High sixteen. Give us a freestyle. Yo. Give us a Meg the Stallion. Yo, August used to be my favorite month, but not no more. It's October. Because I'm a Halloween whore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you feel you know me? What I'm <laughs> Bars. You know what I'm talking about? And Ted dancing. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm a total slut for Halloween. Halloween. I love it so much. Fall. Fall is my favorite season. Yeah. You say nothing now? You can't hear? Y'all didn't hear them bars? Y'all didn't hear my bars? Did y'all hear the bars? No, I can't. Damn. I heard it at first, still can't hear her. I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. Damn. Nope, now they can't hear you. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? You're still far away. Can y'all hear me now? Herbert is very low. Okay. Can y'all hear me now? All right. I don't know what's going on with the mic. If you can say oh, you can hear me now? Mm Hmm. Yeah, cut this part. Cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hear Tony, not Sabrina. Sabrina sound sounds far. far. So when we get her mic situation figured out, uh, I'm gonna hold the porch down. Talk about Frank James Franklin. So there's a dust up in the Hollywood community because 
James Franco is in the running to play Fidel Castro. Now, mind you, mm. all, out the gate, he favors Fidel Castro, especially the pictures I've seen and the pictures that they use for Fidel and James Franco. I see the resemblance. It's not a bad look visually. But they're just like, yo, can we get a Latin actor up in that thing? And you know, you know, I'm always on the side of, I feel him on this. You know what I'm saying? You can get, a, I'm sure there's more than enough Cuban actors out here, even if you're not Cuban. Come on, man. Come on, man. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's Hollywood doing what Hollywood does all the goddamn time. And we going we 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 just need a name that's gonna draw people in. And it's just like enough of that. We off that. We off that. Wait, can y'all hear me now? Because I do have something to say about that. Let's see what they say. Yep. Okay. So James Franco mm -hmm. is not is no longer a name draw like people ain't going to the movies for James Franco anymore. Didn't they? What you basing this on? Uh, the fact that he was uh, accused of rape. Oh. Uh, and he had, he literally admitted to trying to holler at a 17 year old at 35 years old. When did all this come out? This was a while ago. Has he had a movie since these allegations came out? Probably. I don't know. I, I, I stopped keeping track of James Franco. Um, He's canceled? I don't know. I don't care about, I don't do the whole cancel thing, but it's still the fact that he was a 35 year old man mm. trying to convince a 17 year old girl right. to sneak out of her, her hotel room that her mother, she's there with her mother mm. and said, yo, should I get a room? <laughs> My guy. And people would be like, but she was almost 18. I was, I was 18 once. Mm. Men are still creepy. Oh yeah. And I, I didn't know, you're not, you don't turn 18 and all of a sudden you're an adult mentally. So like, right. it's especially like you get attention from guys, from older men, you think it's cool. And then, but you don't realize like, oh shit, the creepiness I'm, being, of it. I'm being groomed. Because a lot, a lot of young teenage girls do go for older men. Because they think it's cool. Mm -hmm. They be like, mm, he has a car. He picked me up. He, has a, he, pay, he paid they, for things. They fall right into the trap. Bro. Tough. Trash. Um, so when when did all these allegations come out? That's what I want to know, because this is all new to me. James Franco. You thought he wasn't a draw just because he wasn't that great of an actor. Um, now let's put it all on the line. You know me. I'm a numbers guy. So this was in 2014. Oh, so he, he's been working since then. Yeah. This is... I'm gonna say so he's still considered a draw then. Nah, man, fuck it. Because obviously this, this, these allegations had no hit on... Okay. So here we go. Let's look at his acting credits. Let's look at the numbers, y'all. Is he a draw? Okay. Is he a draw or is Seth? Ro I mean, Seth. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Right. A draw. That's what we really need to break down. So, let's look at the movies he was a lead in. The Oz and Great and Powerful. That's probably his biggest movie that he led. Um, that movie made over two hundred million domestically. He was the lead in it. He was also the lead in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. He got an Oscar nomination for 127 hours. Um, he was in Date Night, Eat, Pray, Love. These were hits. He was also in Spring Breakers. That movie was ridiculous, but he was he was funny. He was in This Is the End. That was with the crew. Uh, he was in this movie called Homefront, which is an action movie. I think he was the villain in that joint. Um, I know that he was the lead in that movie that was about that guy that made the worst movie of all time. Oh, The Disaster Artist. The Disaster Artist. He was the lead in that, and that movie made $21 million. Um, So, with that being said, everybody knows who James Franco is. 
And he looks like Fidel Castro. So I get the casting. But, so you got an Oscar-nominated actor playing Fidel Castro. That's the typical Hollywood blueprint. He has a name. He could bring people in with the right project. He can, he can bring butts to the seats. So he is a draw. But the, the issue is, why can't we get a Latin actor to be Fidel Castro? Shit. Though, though Andy Garcia is old ass in that role, he's actually Cuban. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is actually Cuban. Let's, let, let's just let him be Fidel. Just, just down the age. Just be like, well, you, you know, you, it's Fidel. And he's in his probably late 60s now. 66. Let him be. He's 66. Let him be Fidel Castro. Let's go down the list. Cue up Cuban actors. Let's see who's Cuban. Let's, let's start there. We got Andy Garcia. I know that off top. But I want to know William who William Levy. Who? William Levy. William Levy. Who is that? That uh, sounds familiar. Here, I'm going to pull up. William Levy. I'm going to pull up the picture. He was in... I don't know if I know him. But he's Cuban. He is Cuban. You know what I'm saying? Wait, let me, before I look Pedro up... Pedro Pascal could play Fidel Castro. Pedro Pascal could play Fidel Castro. Um, I'm not mad at that. There's a bunch here. Oscar and, Nunez. And Pedro is killing. Oscar Nunez? Yeah. I don't know that name. He's from uh, Oscar from The Office. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's Cuban, huh? He's Cuban. Never knew. Uh, Eddie Sibrian. Yo. These are interesting Cuban mm. names. Yo, Pedro Pascal, though. That's not a bad look. And he's killing. And I feel like he's, he's getting his name up there where he could draw people in. People know him as the Mandalorian. People oh, know him from yeah. Narcos. So it's like Pedro Pascal and everybody, you know, you're automatically intrigued by Fidel Castro. Because we know, I don't think most of us know a lot about Fidel Castro. We just know he was the dictator in Cuba. You know, it was beef and like, you know, we know all of that. And he came up with Che Guevara and they was buddies and then, you know what I'm saying? So but we don't know the like the details of his life as a whole. You know, some people really dug in, but oh, if you watch the documentary, side note, I was in a I was in the documentary. <laughs> yeah, I was in a documentary about Che Guevara. And I played a Congolese rebel leader in the dramatization. So I didn't have any lines. <laughs> I was just this Congolese rebel leader drinking and hanging with prostitutes in this uh, Discovery Channel joint on Che Guevara. I, could, I think I posted the video years back. I got to find it on my phone. I have the video. You got the phone. video? Yeah. Yo, send me that video yeah. and I, I'll post it again. <laughs> okay. Um, Pedro Pascal's uh, Chilean, by the okay. way. But it's still... That's better than... Pitbull, we got Pitbull, he's Cuban. Is he Cuban? <laughs> Pitbull as Fidel Castro. Let's get it. If we doing this, we, we being authentic. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Pitbull, man. Let's go. If we being authentic, man, enough. And uh, George Lopez reposted videos from John Leguizamo who was speaking on this. And they were like, well, John Leguizamo, you played an Italian. You know what? Good. White people have been playing Latin characters for decades, mm -hmm. damn near a century. Charlton Heston out here trying to be Mexican or whatever have you. And so, yeah, John Leguizamo did play an Italian. So what? Al Pacino played a Puerto Rican and a Cuban. Enough is enough. <laughs> what a terrible accent. He was, <laughs> he, Al Pacino was Cuban and Puerto Rican. We don't want to hear nothing. All right? We don't want to hear nothing. White people have been everybody in these goddamn movies. They have played blacks. They have played Asians. They have played Native Americans. We don't want to hear shit. Now we can be authentic. John Leguizamo, too, made another good point. He was just like, well, you know, the studios, we, we don't want to... Uh, two Latin leads because then it becomes a you know a Latin film. Just the the usual Hollywood horseshit. 
Like two Latin actors can't carry a film to box office glory. I'm like, man, man, come on, man. We off that now. We off that now. You know what I mean? So we, we got to kill that narrative of, you know. And I get it. You want the box office draw, but you kill that horse shit. Do you remember when uh, it the an executive was like, yo, we should get Julia Roberts to play Harriet Tubman? Was that a real thing? <laughs> I thought it was horse shit. So look, Harriet screenwriter Gregory Allen Howard revealed that an executive in the 1990s wanted actress Julia Roberts to play black abolitionist Harriet Tubman saying it was so long ago no one's gonna know the difference oh my god I can't believe that's a real thing <laughs> I can't believe that's a real thing and then Benicio Angelina Del Toro. Angelina Jolie uh, she played a woman who was executed by the Taliban and look how <clears throat> look how they how they did her wow they did the hair up the curls the yeah they yeah come on man we off that now we, we, we don't need to do that. Everybody is represented in the acting game now. Everybody from everywhere is out here in these acting streets with a resume and the skills. We can cast authentic people to be in these roles. No longer do we have to just lean on the name. Zoe Saldana playing Nina Simone. Oh, good Lord. That was goddamn ridiculous. God damn ridiculous. Enough. We off that now. Shoot, even, even the movie Training Day, right? They had Cliff Curtis play an essay from Los Angeles. He played a Mexican. The dude is from New Zealand. <laughs> I get it. Cliff Curtis is racially ambiguous. When I first saw that movie, I thought he was Mexican. I get it. But then I was like, yo, he's from New Zealand. There's more than enough. Mexican actors from L.A. that know the streets of L.A., that know the people from L.A. that could have been cast in that role. Cliff Curtis did a good job. But to be authentic in a movie about Los Angeles, they had a wealth of Mexican actors they could have used. They could have got Hector. Hector was already in it, probably, knowing him. <laughs> he probably was. Hector, Hector be in it. I think Hector is in Training Day. He is. Oh, in training he is in training day. He is in training day. He's in every movie that's in L.A. Johnny Depp, Native American. What's the name of that movie? Uh, Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. Um, Mickey Rooney. In uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, played a Japanese guy, oh but like God. over the yes, top, he did. over, over the, the top, top Japanese stereotype McGee. Like OD, t like teeth and everything. That's was... another thing, uh, Oscar Isaac. That's another thing John Leguizamo pointed out. Oscar Isaac takes the Hernandez off his last name just so he could, right? you know, book book more roles. Because Oscar Isaac has played Middle Eastern. He's played, he's, he's yeah. played everything. He, he's the kind of actor where, hey, what is he, Panamanian? He's from Panama, I think. is Guatemalan. Guatemala. Boom. And he's played he's played everything. You know, but it, you know, he shaved off that last name cuz he knew the, he knew the Hollywood game. That's that's like a lot of people do on their resume. They change their name on a resume and then they get hired. That's why my entire family has God a damn, different man. identity. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Thank God, you know, at least the movie Prey hired real, you know, Native American actors to be in Prey. You know, the new movie about the Predator set in 1719. But, but God damn, man. Ain't we off this by now, Hollywood? Don't you know that movies can still make money without whites being in everything? Hank Azaria in Birdcage played a Guatemalan, but I'm okay with that. He played a Guatemalan. What is he? Jewish. He's Jewish? Yeah. He was he was hilarious. In the <laughs> hilarious. Now mind you, when we <laughs> when we talk about this, a lot of actors have nailed the roles. Killed it. They have nailed these roles. We're not talking about skill here. It's just the precedence that's set. 
That's what we talking about. There's, you know, a good actor can make any role theirs. But, you know, enough. Enough. <laughs> yes, him in those shoes. Man, Agador. Yeah. That was He was funny in that joke. That that whole movie is hilarious. Me and Tony quote um <laughs> We Run cool. your head on <laughs> into the saloon. <laughs> Nathan like, Lane's John Wayne Walk so in Birdcage. And then he was like, I just never realized John Wayne walked like that. And then he was trying to <laughs> men smear. Shmee. They smear it on. Oh, I pierced the toast. <laughs> Nathan Lane in that movie Birdcage. is pure genius. If you've never seen Birdcage, the it's, Birdcage. It's a good movie. Please. Made over $100 million at the box office, rightfully so. As it should. Surprise hit. Shout out to Robin Williams, Nathan Lane. Hey, where is Nathan Lane? Uh, he's uh, in uh, Only Murders in the Building. Oh, is he? Yeah. He was in the first season. Maybe I didn't get that far. Remember, I didn't finish it. Did you get past episode four? No. Oh, then, yeah. He's, no. in, it. he's in it. He's like... Nathan Lane. He's a main character. Yes. Well, you know, oh. I would... He's pretty. He's pretty. He's prominent. Yes, he's prominent. Nathan Nathaniel Lane. So funny. Remember him in Mouse Hunt. Him and uh, <laughs> him and the dude from uh, There's Something About Mary trying to kill that mouse. <laughs> that movie was funny. You man. remember Rat Race? I, I really I enjoyed that Race. movie. It was like a lot going on. There's a lot going on. But it was it was entertaining. It was mad entertaining. Yeah. It had Mr. Bean. Yep. I loved it. Cuba Gooden Jr. Everybody was in it. Rat Race. I like Yo, movies like that. Nathan though. Lane's only sixty six. Oh, okay. He's pretty young. Nathan Lane. I don't know why. I you thought he was like eighty nine. Just a little bit older. Even the producers was good. Man, Nathan yeah. Lane. Shout out to him. He's a, he's he's dope. He's talented. Very. I said all that to say this. There are more than enough talented Latin actors that can play Fidel Castro. Tap into that wealth of talented Latin actors. Just bank on that. You know? You ain't always got to look for the star. And movies aren't as star-driven as they used to be. You know what I'm saying? So even even a star in a, in a, in a film, a draw, there's no guarantee they're going to draw people in. Movies be out here taking L. Ron Hubbard's all the time with big stars in it. There are only there are only a handful of box office draws left. There's only a handful now. With everybody taking L's. You got Leo, Denzel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Leo? else is a gamble. Leo and Denzel. Leo and Denzel, man. The guarantees. That's facts. Now, if you put a huge star in a, in a movie that's also of interest, then, you know what I'm saying, but when we come in with a drama that may or may not work. I want I want Viola Davis to be in that, like, the top three draws. Oh, me too. Leo, yeah. Denzel, Viola, because she deserves it. Is she a draw, though? That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I wish she was. Is she? To me, she, she is. She might be. Because every time we see her, oh, I'm pulling up. I don't care what she's doing. What's she doing? Watching paint dry? I'll be there. Because we pulling up for the home? woman king. Oh, absolutely. That We every, pulling up for that. That's 100. I'm already at the movie theater. We pulling up for the woman king. She, she was the lead in Widows. And Widows was legit. But also, that movie with J-Lo tanked. Ah. Uh, and then... The Woman King is going to say a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's... Yeah, I was yeah, thinking that when... she is the true lead in the dramatic action piece. Right. This is going to determine a lot. This is going to determine a lot right here. How did Fences do? Fences did. I think I did like 50, 50 mil. For, for, for a drama based on the play and they shot it like a play, those are pretty solid numbers. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because um, it's not like a traditional, you know what I mean? So yeah. Fences did well. 
The Woman King, when I was watching the trailer the other the other day at the movie theater, yeah. I was like, I wonder how this is gonna cross over, right? Like all all around, all across the board, right? Like, is it is everyone intrigued, right? Or is it just us that are like, yeah, Cause like you know we. Are. Yeah. With all the yeah. whites, that's what I'm saying. Like the Asian community, are they like? Do they watch that and be like, "Oh, I, I, I'd, yeah. I'd see. Oh, this looks interesting. Right. This looks good." I feel like only like a handful, probably like twenty percent. The crossover, the crossover appeal, appeal is big business. Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough to know. Facts. It's tough to know. So I feel like a lot of people. Nah, I don't feel like seeing it because you know. They're killing. They're yeah, killing they're gonna make white people assets. look bad or whatever, and so. But we gonna see. We I know I'll see. be there. I'll be in the building. Oh, man. Let's see. Olivia Newton John passed away. Um, she had a battle with breast cancer. Uh, Olivia Newton John was a piece of my childhood. I remember. I remember hearing her name a lot growing up. Grease, of course. My mom had the Grease soundtrack on, on vinyl. Um, this is a physical her. Let's get physical. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the '80s man. She was Olivia she... Newton John. She was the '80s. It was just like I remember thinking her and Elton John was related at one point in time, just because they, you know. Elton John, Olivia Newton John, like, yeah, hey, they're brother and sister. I just made it up in my head. Let's just start that rumor now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They Shut are. Up. Yeah. They're uh, related. And she's own. Australian. <laughs> and he's not. She was the first person. She might have been the earliest person that made me really think about Australian. Like, people from Australia, oh, they talk like that? Um, Because it was before Crocodile Dundee. Once Crocodile Dundee came out, that's when I was like, oh, that's Australian. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's not uh, a knife. Man, that's a knife. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee was just fire to me. I was just mm-hmm. like, yo, this this shit is fire. Um, <laughs> Australia, man, I want to go, man. Shrimp on the barbie. It was, it, it was just, Australia was the shit in the 80s, man. I was like, yo, man. Um, I still want to go there, even though it looks hot and the animals look dangerous and big. That's right up your alley. It seemed like a, a tarantula just gonna jump on you as soon as you get off the plane. That's the vibe I'm getting. In. The kangaroo's gonna come up and sock you up, <laughs> sock you up in the stomach as soon as you get out of the baggage claim. They this just gonna sounds hop up. like everything you would want. I'm though. all in. <laughs> I know you are. If a if a kangaroo run up on me, man, I'm all in. You gonna want me to yo? You film this, film this. Man, film me <laughs> boxing, boxing with this kangaroo, man, and I'm gonna lose. I'm going to take the L. I used to love this game called Kangaroo on the Atari. I used to play the shit out of this <laughs> game. I thought kangaroos was everything. I was like, yo, man, they be hopping around. They got the baby in the pouch, man. This is some dope-ass shit, man. They out here. They boxing people. They hopping. They springing forth. And they got babies in the pouch. I was just like, these animals are crazy. And they be standing <laughs> up. They be standing up taller than the, most of you. Yes. Standing straight at Brolic. Super Brolic. Yo, you've seen the inside of the pouch? Yes. Terrifying. Inside is crazy. Terrifying. But the fact that, you know how beneficial a pouch would be for humans? If oh, you could just put God. the baby in the pouch? You just be like, all right, man, hush. In the pouch. And then you just see the baby's head down there just be looking around? Terrifying. Naturally. They have it naturally built in the way yeah, the baby's <laughs> in the pouch. Incredible, man. Oh, you have the baby? And just like peeking to yeah. the pouch. Oh, you can, hey, oh, hey, oh, man. Get in my pouch, yeah, bro. You know, the pouch. But does everyone have the pouch or do you have to have a baby? Is, is it like, like, it, oh. what, would I have a pouch right now? Right. I wonder. Do kangaroos always have a you pouch? You know what I just found out today on oh. Daddy Issues? <laughs> what? That chickens just lay eggs. It's like a period. I didn't know that. This whole time until today, I thought chickens was pregnant. Oh no! And I thought we was eating the babies. Cows only produce milk uh, after they have a child, or like if they're pregnant. That's that is true, but they don't always produce milk. But a chicken, they have their periods. I didn't know just they like were we. just out here laying eggs. We be laying eggs, and don't and just bleed them out, and then don't die. I found that out today. My mind was blown. I was just like, I thought y'all was pregnant. I thought we was eating the kids. <laughs> So I'm going back to eggs, is what I'm saying. But uh, 
Australia, Olivia Newton John, rest in peace. We remember you. Greece is eternal. I don't know if you ever got tired of it, but you know, if you listen, I've never. Olivia, uh, we remember you, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We got fine memories. I asked a question last week at the end of the episode about women put, women putting their career on hold for love. And I was asking women, I was like, yo, have y'all ever done this? Have y'all ever done this? And what made me ask it is because y'all know I'm in a business where you got to you got to do the work yourself. It's not like a it's not like a nine to five. It's like you get you get out of it what you pour into it. So I know you know uh, women comedians, and I would see them getting in relationships, and then I wouldn't see them as much. And then when they break up, I see them again. Well, really, <laughs> what really made me think of it is Chaz trying to come back to the road doing stand up. Now that you know some of the productions have dried up, he's like, "Yo, I'm back on the road." I was just like. You're doing us like when women get in a relationship and then, you know, they they I don't see them hitting the stages as much. And then when they break up, they back on the scene with new material. So that makes me ask. And with the men, relationship or not, they be out there. They be like, yeah, I just got in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? You see, they'll, they'll either bring the girl around or they won't. It's just, yeah, yeah, we, we've been together for a year. They still be hitting the stages. So I asked the women. I was like, do y'all be putting your career on hold for love? Have y'all ever? I remember one time, and I don't want, I don't want this to turn into a conversation. I'm just bringing up a time mm -hmm. where I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I would, I would, I would like to do uh, stand up. This, this seemed cool. And you was like, man, if I would have known that, I was like, shit, never mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like men are often like we always know. That's when not we the hear, same. Nah, but I just remember being like, all right, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll look at something else. Like men are often like either threatened. Mm. That's Is not that the not same. True? No, no, but that's not the same conversation. No, no, I'm switching the conversation. No, hold on, we got to stay focused <laughs> I just, on the task. I just said you came in. I'm asking you: Have you ever put your career on hold for love? Oh no, I never that's really. The I never really loved anybody before you like that. Even like my ex husband. No, yeah, like, I'm doing what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, but I also was raised differently. My mom was like, "Don't, don't do that." She said, don't ever put like, your... It, she's always, like, encouraged, like, my free spirit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. like, my job when I was married, I was on the road a lot. Right. And so I wasn't about to give that up. I love that. Yeah. And he didn't... But he also wasn't, like, give it up. I'm he was like, supportive. He was mad supportive. Yeah. And if he wasn't, well, I divorced him anyways. I, like, I left. Not because he was doing anything wrong. Just because I was like, I don't want to be a right. wife anymore. Because the narrative is, I'm going to come to you in a second. The narrative is, you know, when you, when you do have a woman that's very career driven and you see it all the time, a lot of times they struggle with dating because the guy couldn't hang with the, the schedule. Like, yo, I'm putting my career first, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? I do want love. I do want a family, but, but I love what I do and I want to keep doing it. And so they, they struggle there. But I, I see the case of the opposite being more so prevalent than the other way around. Have you? I definitely have not put my career on hold for no relationship ever. Yeah. I've been working since I was 14. And it's like, even when you're dating a guy, what 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 is it that he needs to where you can't go do what you're doing with mm -hmm. your life? What, what are the needs? And even being married and having kids... I still kept going. It's like, well, they gonna come with me, or right. and I started doing comedy. My my husband would take me to certain shows, and then when he couldn't, then I would go by myself mm. and talk about it the next day. Oh, that's Katrina well, talking, by the way. Yeah, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> and the 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 point is, what are what are women when you see them stepping away, Tony? What are they saying that they? What do he need me to lay down? What do he need me? Why can't now I the step continue? away? I've seen it. Yeah. So so usually. Cause I see it from the from the beginning phases. So you know the comedian is out there. I see her on the grind, open mics. We doing shows. This, this, that, and the third. Yeah. And then they get in a relationship. You don't see them as much. 
You know, they, 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 and I'm sure they had the various reasons of, of why or what, whatever that particular guy needed. But then they just kind of, you know, fade off a little bit and disappear. They're not hitting his mic, the mics as much. Entertainment industry can be pretty lonely. You realize how much you're sacrificing to be in these comedy streets and how much you're sacrificing just to have a full time job and yeah. a part time dream and then another hustle. So they maybe get with these men and they feel like, okay, let me just enjoy this papa season right now where somebody yeah. caring for me and checking for me, I feel. Mm. Yo, yeah. I um I had a conversation not too long ago with someone who was literally like, I don't know how Tony does it. And I was like, What? Cause they know like that I get hit up mm. a lot. Like, you know, my DMs be stupid. Mm. Um, my comments, Ow. I get them comments once in a while, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Um, and they're like, if it was me, I would make sure you get no DMs like that. I was like, how would you do that? How do you do that? That's sir? exactly. I was like, how do you do that? <laughs> how does that happen? And they're like, you know how. I was like, how? How? How do, how do I control another person DMing me? Right. How do I control another person finding me attractive or Did they say, yeah. reaching out? They literally just kept saying, you know how. I was like, was do you want me? Like, <laughs> are you saying like, do I delete everything? Yeah. You, you, you just know how. How? And I'm like. Yeah, I'm fucking glad that you're not my man because you yeah. are not. How are you gonna how fake have a solution? Right. Just, just, just and have. I just kept asking, and and like if I ever see them again, mm. which I'm I'm sure I'm gonna see them again, I'm be like I'm gonna go right back to it. Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. Oh, you gonna go back to the to the question? How? Because wow. I still never got an wow. answer. That's new. Because you don't go back to the question. No, but this is this is something that bothers me so yeah. much because I just don't know how. Right. How do you do this? <laughs> and why are you so insecure? These are people that I've ne these are people in my request that yeah. have no contact with me. Uh -huh. And we be looking at it together, like, man, look what this dude said, man. Yeah. This is weirdo. Like that. It's not like I'm hiding like, oh, some guy complimented me. Right. And I, I can't show you every guy because it's it gets annoying. That would, that would, I, I don't want I don't I only show you the ones that are like mad ridiculous. I, oh wait. You know. I do have something to tell you. But um I'm going to just tell you on live. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know how there's a certain group that we are fans of, but they are trash communicators? Like there's this one specific. Yes. Another one hit me up. Mm -hmm. Like I I think I tagged them in something in January. Uh -huh. And they hit me up the other day talking about it. I love it. It's like, bro, you don't even see my story anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I just thought it was mad funny. And I meant to um yeah. send you the screenshot to that. That just reminded it's just... me. But like, yeah, we, I send you stuff all the time, and it's like it's not a big deal. But to him, he was like, "That can never be me." Who who was that? I know you can't say it on air. But I can't say it. Is it a comedian? No, nah, no. Nah. Somebody we both know. No. Oh, okay. No. 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 Um, I don't know. I really don't. I've never got an answer. Yeah. How? 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 <laughs> How? <laughs> um. But that, for for me, you know, it's like what everybody's talking about now with when they ask The Rock whose pet would he be, oh, he yes. said Meg Thee Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> and then they was like, they was like, well, why? I don't want to get into that. Yeah. And so Meg's man had said something back, and then it was just like, you know, he cracked the joke back or whatever. But for me, it's like, I like it when people find who I'm with attractive. Like I like, you know, it's like, hey man, <laughs> you see it. And so let's say The Rock said that about Sabrina. I'll be like, you goddamn right. You see what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm Thanks. like, <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the most famous champ. man in the world find, find my woman attractive. You goddamn right. And so, but that's just me. But a lot of people can't, fathom that or handle it or whatever i guess you just want your your mate to just not be attractive to other people i guess you just want that and you don't want people speaking on it and you don't want people making comments or saying anything you know i mean if that's you then have that your ugly person <laughs> and enjoy and flourish and nobody ever saying anything or being attracted to whoever you're with did you see my comment recently on one of your posts or the the toe point post What'd like you say? it was a bunch of women in there, like yo, low key Tony kind of fine. Tony, mm -hmm. this that's what, and I was like, nah, son, I've been trying to tell y'all he fine. <laughs> Don't be trying to come around here now all of a sudden. Like I told y'all, he was fine. 
<laughs> Nobody want to listen to me. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, oh, you know what? <laughs> nah, he been fine. Man. I love it. He blushing. <laughs> I mean, That's so cute. Y'all so cute. <laughs> There's probably just one person that says no, something. No, no. You know, I promise she'll, you. She'll make it sound like it was 80. It was 20. I counted it. <laughs> It'd be it like three. two people saying 20, 22. Yeah, it was all in that comment section. It'd be like two. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would screenshot everyone. They got me mad. I was like, nah, man. But yeah, like, you know, if I, if I was Meg's man, and Meg is already somebody that everybody wants, men and women. Yeah, that hollers. They be like, Meg the Stallion. So with The Rock saying that, and we don't hear The Rock speak on women often, I've been right. like, okay, yeah, that's dope. And then and then they went back to the Kevin Hart, The Rock foolishness that was yeah. that And Kevin Hart was like, Denzel. I think, I think <laughs> it like, was. Hey, what you told me backstage. <laughs> it's so like, not like The Rock. That's what made it even funnier. That's what made it even dope. And he answered quick. Mad like, quick. whose pet would you be, Meg? <laughs> we were just like, oh, oh, snap. Of all the women in the yeah. world, Meg the Meg the style. He could have thought of anyone. Anyone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you got damn right you picked yeah. a black woman. Hey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I was like, I was like, all right. Probably could have wrapped a couple bars, too. He that was probably... Dwayne right there. <laughs> that was Dwayne. That was Dwayne. That was Lil that, Wayne. That, yeah. <laughs> that was Dwayne. That was D-Wayne, god damn it. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like... Um, so I just expect Sabrina to get hollered at in person, online, in the comments section, in the DMs. I expect it. It's just like, you know. And if she wasn't getting hollered at, I'd be like, yo, you ain't been getting hollered at? Nobody? No. What the hell you been doing wrong? Let me smell you real quick. What's going on here? But even online. Hmm? I said even online where they can't smell me. Yeah, it's just like, what, y'all not feeling this? <laughs> I'm you posting I mean? all bad angles. It, it's just, you know, you but 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 I get some people just can't handle that. They can't handle that type of attention that their significant other is getting. And if you if you are that type of person, get you an ugly person. That I mean, that's the get you an unappealing person. Then you good, mm-hmm. you good. You ain't got to worry about nothing. But for me, for me, I like. Having someone that looks good to more than just myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the only one. Y'all ain't feeling this, man. Come on, man. Oh, there's so Look many. at it. She just oh, uh, <laughs> she looked like a zombie eyeball hanging loose, the toxic avenger. Oh, y'all not loving. feeling this? <laughs> Come on, man. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of women out there like that. They're, they're, that they'd be like, man, my man is so fine. Oh, with the, yeah, really she like, with the toxic nah, women. He just tall. <laughs> <laughs> he just tall, girl. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of dress. And, and and if if you are in love with somebody, you like somebody that might not be that visually appealing. I'm not. I'm not dissing that. I'm just saying, if you're happy with who you with, that's what it's all about. But I'm just saying that if you if you don't want people to find your mate attractive. Ever to never even think of it, never even mention it, never even say anything about anything. And you know, good luck with that. I wish you the best. Um, so I went on a little, a little video dive of Michael Jackson's eating habits. Because as y'all know, I don't know if y'all know this, but I've been I've been struggling with my weight lately, and like I haven't been feeling my size. I haven't been feeling nothing about nothing. And I can't stop eating. So that's where I'm at. So I was just like, I saw a video on my YouTube feed. It was like Michael Jackson's diet eating. So I was like, what was Michael Jackson eating? Because all these years of Michael Jackson, I never really thought about what was his diet like? He stayed slim the whole time. So I so I, I clicked on the video and he was trash out here. When he was younger, he would be eating like, uh, you know, when they were young, you know, you're always dancing, moving on tour, whatever. So, you know, they got the the, the sweets and the 
and the uh, you know fast food if they're on tour, they just eating that. But when you're young, your metabolism is different. You just eating filth, but you still looking slim and trim, especially when you're active. So then when he got a little bit older, he was eating like you know KFC. Somebody somebody that knew him was like. Michael Jackson always had KFC. Sometimes, I remember one time I got in the car with him, he took the skin off, and he's like, look, now it's organic. And so he was just eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was a fan of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Then he started to get into a mindset of, okay, I want to I wanna be slender so I can execute my dance moves better, and they just look better with a slim frame to what I'm doing. So that's when he started like kind of scaling back and not really eating. So he got to a point where, you know, he, he was vegetarian for a while, um, but he wasn't really eating that much. He was eating salads. They would make him salads and he would eat like a couple forks full and then he would just waste the salad or whatever. He would be eating fruit every now and then. He wasn't a fan of vegetables, so he was just out here. He would forget to eat. They would pay people to remind him to eat. Um, he was just like, you know, not food. And then he went to the doctor. The doctor was like, yo, man, you need some kind of protein in your life. You out here. He's going to the hospital for exhaustion and dehydration. And I'm just like, yo, this dude. All right. And so he's, uh, so he went back to, to chicken and fish, but he still wasn't eating that much of it. They were just making food. He would waste it. Um, he was weighing like 130. He was getting close to 100 pounds. This is a grown man, 5'9". Um, so he was just out here just not eating. And I was just like, man, how do you get to the point where you just not even thinking about food? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that life means. I don't, I don't know how you get there. Because like for me, nothing can keep me away. Nothing. You know, not even... Losing my son didn't even do the trick. And I'm just like, man, god damn, man. What do, how do I, if I'm excited about something, I could lose my appetite for a little bit. But that excitement only lasts for so long. And I'm just like, oh, not the excitement. All right, food. And then when I lost weight years back, they prescribed me this uh, pill where it kind of deletes your appetite. That worked, but my penis didn't work. So I was like, this ain't going, we can't, we're not doing this. So I was just like, nah, man, I can't, you know, I have that. I didn't notice it at first, but then I was like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? My penis ain't been working, man, with, with this. It's cutting off the appetite, but also this. So I was like, nope, we're not doing that. Um, but, but Michael Jackson stayed with the shitty eating habits until he checked out. And so I was just like, damn. When he passed away, they said he was about 130. Um, his lowest, he had got down to damn near close to like 100 at, a, at, at some point in time. But I was just like, damn, Michael. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can hire a chef. And they was bringing in chefs. They was calling chefs like, you know, you are the vegetarian chef that he needs. Come on this tour with us. The other chef left. You know what I'm saying? We'll pay you this. And I was just like, God damn. I think about food constantly. I just be like, yeah, what am I eating? I'm hungry. What are we eating later? What's going on? And it sucks. I don't want I don't want these thoughts all the time. So I'm trying to get on the Michael Jackson plan without the ridiculousness. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to get on the forget to eat. It. I will not have it. Man. No, I ain't never happen. forgot to eat. So I have. So <laughs> as you know, an observer, Michael was five nine of your existence. Mm -hmm. I definitely do think you need to switch your fasting time, your fasting mm -hmm. hour window, because you do need to speed up your metabolism again. Yeah. Um, you do need to eat first thing in the morning. You do need to eat before you go to the gym because you do lift heavy and you're not feeding your muscles. So your body's just like, I don't know what we doing. So yeah. you have muscle depletion due to the fact that you're not having the proper uh, fuel for the workout. The, the workout. Mm -hmm. And that, food that you're eating literally will go to your muscle growth and what happens with muscle growth is fat loss right. fat burn you know what i mean and so also i feel like if you do 
if you're looking to lose weight, you do need to be in a caloric deficit. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, That's easy. And also, with a caloric deficit, you do get to eat pretty much almost what you want. Like, mm. But I do feel like you're, one of your biggest habits is binging. And I think binging comes from the fasting. from fasting. Yep. And that's why you need to wake up in the morning and just eat, grab mm -hmm. something to eat, uh, grab something. I don't know what it's going to be the right apple. now. It, may, I think, well, you need, a, you need a little bit more because of the fact that you be um, lifting. And mm -hmm. I was watching you work out today. I'd be watching you. Um, I watch you because I'm like, okay, what can we do different right. to get the results that he wants? Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're, the biggest thing is just learning when to eat, what to eat, and how to eat. Yeah. Like I said, you do need more protein in your life, and you've mm -hmm. been doing better with that because you're doing all these workouts but no protein so you're literally not feeding anything right and your body by the time you do eat your body is already in its starvation mode so everything you eat doesn't get burned it gets stored yeah. because it doesn't know when you're going to eat again and yeah um breakfast breakfast <laughs> all that to say all that to say breakfast. you need breakfast yeah i've been there tony I have five brothers, and we used to have eating competitions. Yes. And in order to train my, because growing boys eat, they will yeah. eat. I have a son, and they just nonstop. So to get away from that as a grown person is really difficult. Mm -hmm. And everything Sabrina was saying, I definitely can vibe with. But my thing is the portions. It's the amount oh, because yeah. you, when something tastes good, yes. you just I'm whoa, the you. siren, yeah. So the thing is, I started juicing, which changed it. Because when your body mm -hmm. says it's hungry, it don't mean I want to taste something. It means I need these vitamins in order to get this engine going. You're right. So with the water and the juicing and chewing gum. Chewing Just gum. because I missed chewing. I used mm. to chew gum all the time. So I started wearing these aligners. Yeah. I used to always have gum. Right. Constant chewing. Right. But uh, But none of, none of this, because all the stuff Sabrina told me I knew. But that doesn't. Why am I thinking about food all the time? Because you're not. You're not. Because this has been lifelong weight loss, I'm whatever, yeah. caloric deficit, whatever. Why am I always thinking about? I food? feel like you need certain nutrients that you're not getting because when your body, like when you're craving certain things, that's mm -hmm. because your body is deficient in certain nutrients. And when you're thinking about certain foods, depending on the foods that you think about all the time, yeah, is will uh, direct you to the nutrients that you're deficient in. Mm. So what you do need to do, like every time you are craving, like every time you think of a certain food, mm. write it down. And so you can try to pinpoint and go to a nutritionist with it and pinpoint what new what nutrients your body is yearning for. Yeah. Like when people say like, oh, I have a sweet tooth, it's because they're deficient in certain nutrients. Like um, I can't think of which nutrients right now. Or like you want something salty. Or like all of that just is your body craving the nutrients that you need. Yeah. So I think. Why my body always craving? Because you're a football built individual and you need a certain amount. That's a lot, Richard. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Food um, is a hobby. Food. I love food. Yeah. Just like you love movies. Just like you love your job. You yeah. Love food. That's a. It's, it's an art to it. it I can is. appreciate somebody painting that thing on my plate, even yes. though I don't eat half that stuff anymore. I still. I'm a fan of food. Me too. I'm a fan. I love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> food. But just taste it. You don't have to devour it. Just that's my that's thing. And that's it. I always have to finish. No, I have it. Mm -hmm. And sa and save some. Like if you cut that one meal in half and yeah. you say, I yes. love this so much, I want to eat it all day. So yeah. just a bite here and a bite the there. Discipline then go to that. my water, tea, and juice. Then okay, because you can have it. Yeah. You just yeah. be trying to have two and three. My yeah. mother does that. She loves something. She's like, I'm getting two. One for now, one Me for later. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Then at the meal, you done ate both and you still don't have one for later. Yeah. 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 When I was in my like craziest shape, um, when I would go out to eat, when the food got to the table, I'd split it in half and tell them to box. Can you box this up? Yeah. And then I would eat because the American serving size Too is big. ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yep. And like I had that mentality like, all right, this is multiple serving sizes yep. and I don't need this right now. And if you eat every two hours, you, you might you might do better. Yeah. Because you need you need you definitely do need to eat more. Because when you do finally eat, you do go in. Yeah, because that 
Let's do the You're starving. The yeah. But like like I said this weekend I, I I cut the clock off. Yeah. So I haven't been I haven't been fasting for the past three days. Three, four days. That's day four, I think. So this morning though, all I had was that mind uh thing. Oh, how was that? The mind uh what's it called? Yeah. Yeah. I had that before I went to the gym. Okay. Um Oh, I got to make you some, uh, the chia seed pudding I've been making lately. So I take, um, everybody, listen, this is this is the way to do it. I take the already made protein drinks that I have and just mix it in with chia seeds. It's already sweet. It's got the high protein and it's just two ingredients. Yeah. And it comes out pudding mm-hmm. consistency and it's delicious and silky and silky. really good. And then the chia, but, but what chia seeds does, it expands in your stomach. And it keeps you full for uh, a good amount of time, especially if you have it like, you know how they be drinking chia water? Yeah. If you drink that, it expl- expands in your stomach and it keeps you full. That's why they're like, people always like, yeah, chia seeds in the morning right. with my key lime water. Key lime water. Yeah. We gonna get you right. Yeah, I want to know what the goal is, though. For me? For him? Sabrina said her man is fine. Well, I well, mean, how much you? Tra- what is the goal? It has to be a look. goal for myself. Yeah, I, it, yeah, like it doesn't her matter what I it think. Ain't enough for yeah, me. It, and it, even so, the other way around. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be like I want, I want, I want no love handles. All right. At all, and I want a six pack for once in my life. Mm. I want, That's I want it goal. for yeah. once in my life. Like it's no love goal. handles for sure. I want to be like D'Angelo was on the cover of Voodoo. Hey, I think, and then what's That's crazy. My goal. Is that you have the muscle there? Yeah, you have the muscle there. It's just the layer of fat that you need to get off. Mm-hmm. And the reason you only reason you have, I know the fact, like because you're consistent with working out, lifting yeah. heavy, you have a program. Mm. The second you get your nutrition right, because your arms and your 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 chesticles is looking right. Yeah, them that chest, whew, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just, but as we get older, um, our midsection is like. Mid-section. The hardest thing to to either get rid of Mid-section. or just tone or anything, but once you get that nutrition right, yeah, you that is right there. Eighty percent. A boxing trainer, they know how to cut. Oh, yeah, they oh, know yeah. How to cut. boxers, a, yeah. not a regular trainer, a boxing yeah. trainer. Yeah. They probably chisel had me what shredded up mm-hmm. like a Julian salad, like the yes. Russian and Rocky. Yeah, um, yeah, because I've been doing less cardio than I normally do too. Cause I used to walk every day, and sweat and walk every every morning. I'd walk for like an hour and a half, two hours, and I quit doing that. Cause it's hot. Yeah. And it's just it's just been like I've been just overwhelmed with schedule, so it just be like. Uh. But yeah. I do want to I do want to talk about this because you are Mr. Mm-hmm. Water himself. Mm-hmm. Um, they found out that rainwater. Is no longer drinkable due to forever chemicals in the air. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You can't even drink ra- rainwater. Like you can't. If you're in the middle of wherever, and all in you have is rain. Little Italy. In the, dead in the middle of little Italy. Little did we know that we riddle two middlemen who didn't do diddly. You couldn't even drink rainwater in the middle Dang of it. all that. That's tragic, man. That hurts my soul. Man. That's crazy, though. Y'all know how I feel about water. Not yeah. even in Alaska. Yeah, it says Can't everywhere. Right. On yeah. Earth. Oh. Yeah. Rainwater everywhere on Earth. Unsafe to drink due to forever chemicals. Forever chemicals? What's forever chemicals? This is how they... It's called per and polyfluoral... Listen, it's a crazy chemical. <laughs> Substance are a large family of a human-made chemicals that don't occur in nature. They are known as forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment. So it's our fault. Of course, man. Mm. It's always our fault. It's always our fault. That's facts. Always. That's why we suck. Um, Question from Ty Frederick. Do you consider ancient Egyptians black? I know they were depicted as tan, light-skinned, but I had a debate about this recently. Um, I feel like Because you have to take into account hieroglyphics. All right? So they was looking pretty tan on them pictures. They was looking pretty tan. They didn't look dark-skinned. Some of them were dark-skinned on those pictures, if I'm not mistaken. 
So you just got to look at the if though if those hieroglyphics are as old as they say they are, that tells you everything you need to know. They're not out here. They wasn't out here writing English language scriptures. They showing you the visuals of the day. And they damn sure wasn't pale. So whatever that entails is is what it was. Um, you know, I would love to go back and, and lay eyes on them in real time to see what they were really looking like back then. But, I mean, just just look at the artwork, man. Look at the region, look at the artwork, and then you, you take it from there. Um, what they identified as, I don't know. I don't know. You know, everything was different back then, so I don't know. But, you know, they, they, they was tan in them pictures. So, there's that. Um, so, it says, mainstream scholars reject the notion that Egypt was a white or black civilization. They maintain, despite the phonetic diversity of ancient and present-day Egyptians, applying modern notions of black or white races to ancient Egypt is a anachronistic? I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I do think the Sphinx face looks more black than anything. The Sphinx has a blackish face. Does everything... Let me ask you this. Because we often speak on black or white. Mm -hmm. But does everything fall in those two categories? Because I I, I get what they're trying to say. It doesn't mm -hmm. fall under black or white. Right. It's Egyptian. You know what I right. mean? Um so like is it is it a it is is also is it American ideology that everything has to fall under black and white? Oh absolutely. That's American That's super American to, to the T. So but when it comes to stuff like that like when you see these artifacts and they have features that you know, the features tell a lot. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So if you see like these ancient artifacts, big full lips, big lips, the nose shape, these certain things, which is like, oh, you know, that's the shape of a traditional, you know, African face or like, you know, straight up black face or whatever. And um, what's crazy about Egyptian stuff is that there, there, there's different looks within that. Like I said, the Sphinx looks kind of like more black than maybe, you know, the artwork on King Tut's sarcophagus or whatever. So it's just like, what we talking about here? And, and I do feel that, you know, just like now, you know, you, you got a whole bunch of different looks within so many different civilizations that people were a part of the civilization still and just like, man, you look like this, but you lived here. Yeah, we was looking, we was looking different. Not everybody was looking the same. Okay, now with the idea of looking at them and seeing that their features are, you know, black features, what about indigenous people with black features? Because they're not black. Like, could Egyptians just be an indigenous Oh. Uh, race i guess yeah um but we again we split everything in black and white mm. and we often in every conversation yeah. leave out indigenous people right because even there was a uh a tweet yesterday that was like if if you're not black you're white and a bunch of indigenous yeah, people were like on, the hell right. <laughs> what about us right um so could egyptians just be indigenous to that region and not really fall in either Either one of those categories. Because they also have, they do have African features, but they also have, you know, indigenous like Taino, indigenous mm. American, indigenous South American. Right. Those They all have the same features. Mm. So I wonder how that, how that happened. Mm. That's another, that's a whole other conversation. But everything, yeah. at, at the end of the day, everything comes from Africa. <laughs> right. That's what, that's where it originated. But yeah. That's true though. Like when you when you think about the indigenous people of every landscape. Yeah, the they got aboriginals. That look. The aboriginals are they're super dark. Mm-hmm. And like, but they just got that look of just like, yo, know, we this is where it all began. They yeah. got the this is where it all began vibe. They try to breed them out. 
That's the, Australia is just crazy with it. That's so crazy. Um, they literally took all the children of the aboriginals and just tried to breed them out by having them have children with white people until there was no more aboriginals. I'm like, bro, I mean, there's still there's still aboriginals out there, but they right. tried their hardest to like do this, right. which is it's just so it's, insane. It's crazy. It was a success in Tanzania. They made oh, that. Oh, they have accomplished it. There are no more original Tanzanians, which is that island off the coast of Australia. That's crazy. There are no more original Tanzanians. Man. That is disgusting. Man. And I remember the first time I saw an aboriginal person was in Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> The crocodile His, His yes, friend dude. rolled up, and I was just like, yo, look at this dude right here. <laughs> God damn, man. Yo, Abor aboriginals, like, are, what's the word I'm looking at? Like, I can't look away. I'm like, oh, man, they're amazing. They're enticing. They're amazing like, to see. I was just like, man, look at, look at you. And I don't want to be staring at you, but it's just like. Amazing. You got to look away real quick. Right. It's not to be rude, but it's just like, man, your whole look is just. Yeah, and Sri Lankans, they have that oh, same vibe. Sri Lankans, for yes. sure. Sri Lankans and MIA, Aboriginals. Her face Tear is drop like of India. Yeah, her face is uh, is pretty intriguing. I'm like, okay. MIA. Yeah. Um, that sizzle asks, can we have a Patreon selected double feature over two nights? We could vote from a group of movies, maybe drinking games too. You know what? That sounds like a great idea. Oh, okay. And so, I'm all for it. Uh, the Emperor's New it. Groove. Yeah. <laughs> Emperor's New Groove. And, uh, and the Goonies. Oh, Goonies, huh? Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Listen, patrons, we're going to take a stand. If this man doesn't watch either the one of Goonies those by the end streaming. of the, the end of the day, I mean the end of the year, I want everyone to unsubscribe. Goonies ain't streaming. <laughs> That's OD. All right. Well, I said one of them. Emperor's New Groove is Emperor's New on. Groove Disney. ain't a... Uh, I don't have on. Disney Plus. I do. I got you. I'll buy it. <laughs> My laptop broke. <laughs> As he's on it. <laughs> sweet. Speaking of movies, Bullet Train. Saw Bullet Train this weekend. Uh... Latest action movie starring Brad Pitt. I feel like we ain't seen Brad Pitt in a little bit. Um, from the director of one of the Deadpool movies. I think it was like Deadpool 2 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bullet Train, action movie, having to do with assassins interacting with one another. You know, assassin on assassin crime. Uh, the story is about an assassin or, you know, that type of ilk played by Brad Pitt, who's in therapy, and he's trying to, you know, make better decisions in life, try to be less violent, try to try to have a longer fuse, if you will, and uh, looking at the bright side of life, working on his luck. No spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers on Bullet Train. And he gets an assignment, and, you know, he has to pick up a briefcase that's on a train. He has to get that briefcase, and just retrieve, just retrieve the, the briefcase. Simple enough. But, you know, movies, they're never that simple. Um, there are other assassins and, you know, people completing missions on the train as well. They have the briefcase that Brad Pitt is trying to get, but they also have their agenda as well, working with this uh, ruthless man called the White Death. And, you know, they can't screw it up because their lives are on the line. But also Brad Pitt must complete his mission. And he wants to do it. You know, he don't want no trouble. You know what I'm saying? He even left... His pistol in the locker at the train station. Can you put pistols in train station lockers in Tokyo? I don't know. So confusion ensues, paths across, assassins facing off, and what we have is action on a confined space on a bullet train in Tokyo. Um so you want to know how it's going to turn out. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got a great cast. We got Brad Pitt. We got uh, Brian Tyree Henry. We got Aaron Taylor Johnson. We have uh, Bad Bunny is in this joint. Uh, I don't know if this is his film debut. 
I don't know. You know, everybody's doing everything now, so you can't really tell. Um, there are also some surprise pop-ups throughout the film. And there, uh, it was a good time. Going in, I felt like they were going to do over-stylized action that meant nothing. That was my mindset going in. I felt like this is going to be a movie where it's going to be mad action. People are going to be getting killed off. And the action won't mean a goddamn thing. Kind of like, kind of like the Gray Man on uh, Netflix. You know, the the action was there, but it was just like there were no there were no stakes involved. Uh, Judy Lopez said it, it was Bad Bunny's movie debut. Um, Bad Bunny is supposedly supposedly getting his own Marvel movie in the works. Really? I heard about that. Do y'all know who he, he who, who would he play? Who would he play on the Marvel too? El Muerto. Who? El Muerto. Uh, a luchador. Bad Bunny un unveiled as a new Marvel hero, El Muerto, for Sony Pictures. Is it Jody or Judy? Hold on, I'm far away. Hold on, let me get you right. Oh, Jody, my bad. I, I was looking at the screen far away, my bad. Jody. Um, who's the character? El Muerto. He's a he's a wrestler that got part, so he would be playing Joe. Mexican again. Yeah. He plays a Mexican guy in Bullet Train. How do y'all feel about that? I wish he would play a Puerto Rican. How do you feel about Puerto Ricans playing Mexicans, Mexicans playing Chileans, Peruvians playing Cubans? I feel like Mexicans. Cubans. Mexicans have played everything. Yeah. Mexicans have been, they've dominated, especially Hollywood forever. Mm -hmm. That when J-Lo came out, people were just like, oh yeah, another Mexican. I'm like, hey, hey, who, wait, who, hold on. Who played Italian. Who played an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably been Italian or something else more than Puerto Rican. Yeah, absolutely. In her whole filmography. I don't even think she's been Spanish, like Latin, that much. Just in Money Train, in Money Selena. Train. Yeah. Period. She did a great job. I'm not even a big fan of her acting, but she she pulled it off. I believe she was those nationalities. The host of them? The, the most of the roles that J Lo. You believe had. her as an Italian woman? Yeah. yeah. I she believe could her. definitely be Italian. With the darker hair, the way casting does it and designs it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not a distraction and yeah. the actor has the wherewithal to embody that nationality. I say go for it, but what you're not gonna do is have someone that doesn't aesthetically look like a nation, mm. and then try to put them in that role. Ain't yeah. no actor gonna pull that off, and it's actually a disservice to that whole community. Right? <laughs> yeah, but if you can, if you can pull it off, great job on your acting chops. Please have the accents right. So you cool with the James Franco Fidel Castro because he looks the part? That's a different realm. I think people of color... I'd be cool with it if they can pull it off visually first and then add the layer of acting to it. Visually, he gonna pull it off. So then I'm good with it. Okay. Yeah. Just I just want more uh, Caribbean representation. That's why I, I would want him to play a Puerto Rican. Bad Bunny. Yeah, Bad yeah. Bunny. Because Puerto Rico gets ignored, I Indeed. think, in film. Absolutely. 100%. They be Spain, McGee. They be Mexico, you know, That's Montgomery. America, but I feel like Puerto Rico is overlooked and the Dominican Republic. Oh, Dominican Republic. Oh, all day. I, I feel like it's just, it's, it's overlooked. I want way more Dominican and Haitian representation. And I don't want Haiti. Haitian pops up, though. But I don't want Haiti. I'm sick of <laughs> Haiti being portrayed as mm -hmm. this damaged. Mm -hmm. Like hellhole. Yeah, mm. I am sick of that because right. it's gorgeous. Right. Good food. Good people. Yeah. It's good the music. Other half of the dr. Yeah. The, the, the vacation tourist spot. They are neighbors. They all felt that earthquake. Yeah. People don't know that that's the same island. Right. Yeah. yeah. Man. Anyways, bullet train. Bullet train. So we got Bad Bunny, Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying? Um, the girl from The Conjuring. Damn, they they got so I had nicknames for everybody in Bullet Train. I got I got the the Japanese Robert Pattinson. 
I got old blue eyes, which is the girl from The Conjuring, because they were, her eyes are really striking. Um, who else? I wrote everything down. God damn it! One thing, one one thing that annoyed me in the movie: some movies try to put too much personality on everything. Sometimes they can overdo the seasoning on personalities and being funny and being quippy and being all that. Sometimes they can overdo it. It's like, all right, man, all right. Okay. Um, and Bullet Train kind of falls into that realm um, a lot, kind of. So it's just like, all right, man. Okay, 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 okay. Because it's, it's a very talky movie. So it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of, um, you know, banter, a lot of a lot of personality and pizzazz, which is cool. But I, I just feel like they were really trying to overdo it. The action meant more than I expected it to. Like, I was just like, okay. Uh, there were some moments in the movie where I was just like, all right, this is ridiculous. This is damn, this is cartoony. And so I was just, it kind of threw me out of it. Um, but overall, you know, I did like the performances, especially uh, Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson, who normally bores me. Uh, he was good in this. Um Brad Pitt is Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt looks great, by the way. Um, Bad Bunny conveyed anger, and that's all he needed to do, really, just just be mad, and he was that. Um, there was some nice little twists and turns, little cameos here and there that, that popped. Um, so I was entertained. Uh, it didn't blow me away, um, but I was entertained. I had a good time at that movie theater. Um, I wasn't bored. I was annoyed here and there, but you know, overall, you know, it was a good time. You know, good time. Uh, but forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Bullet Train? Well, here it is. Oh yeah, I'm giving Bullet Train. Whew. I'm gonna give it a flaccid three and a half saxophones out of five. Flaccid flaccid um but good good matinee joint man. what you giving it i'm giving it a four and a half four and a half four and a half i had a great time i don't care i enjoyed <sighs> myself from beginning to end i loved everyone yeah. um i appreciated the story uh at first i was like where's this going mm -hmm. and then i was like oh that's what i was going. all in yeah. um i had a good time okay. i enjoyed it I will go see it again in the theaters. I mm. might do it. Doubling up? Yeah. I had man, I had I had fun, bro. I don't think you understand. I was <laughs> I was in my own world. I was like, yo, this is yeah. a great movie. Yeah. I don't care. You never seen Emperor's New Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um Thank well, you, yeah. Jordan. But you know, three and a half, four and a half, so y'all can meet in the middle of the four if you go watch it. Brad Pitt just had his eyes done like Robert Redford. What you mean? Man, Brad Pitt. That man knows how to age. I'm straight baffled. Robert Redford did something to his eyes? He had work done? Oh, shit. Well, it looks like good work. Robert Redford hung in there for a while. Oh, well, Brad Pitt's eyes still look, they still look good. I still look at him. And yeah. I like his voice too. Bullet Bullet Train is entertaining though. It's for sure. Time. For sure. For sure. Like three and a half. And let, let, let's be clear. Three and a half is a good rating. If I go see a movie and it's not a four point five, I want my money refund back. I mean, Slorita, you it's, ain't gonna give it a four and a half. Slorita not even going. He's not leaving the house. He's not going to the theater for one. No, that's Period. Brad Pitt looked like a young Robert Redford. I get it. Are there any snitches in that movie? You might not like it. I get it. Uh, I don't there remember. was one snitch, kind of, sort of. Yeah, not really, but. Um, and you get back on your feet. Sorry, right, TC. I also want to review the movie Prey that is on um, Hulu. Prey is the next installment in the Predator franchise. I'm going to give a little quick review. So imagine the Predator 
in a 1719 setting for the year. So now the predator is going against uh, the indigenous American people and some Europeans of the day. That's a great premise. The predator's coming down, and the predator's going to predator. You know, so the predator's out here, you know, fighting them, fighting the wild animals. Prey is a good time. Prey is a story about a young uh, Native girl who really wants to be more than just a woman that stays in the tent and cooks and cleans and does all the womanly shit they be doing. She's like, nah, man, I want to hunt. I want to be, a, you know, I want to protect the village. I want to hunt. I want to go with y'all. And the typical, <laughs> but you're a girl vibe is, is the is, is the wave. She's just like, nah, man, trust me. I'm skilled with the tomahawk. I can do this. I can track. I can do this. I got my little trusty dog with me, man. Y'all need to fuck with me. Fuck with me out here in these hunting streets, man. I can do this. Trust. And her older brother's like, yo, I believe in you, but you know they just going to be hating. And she's like, man, they, man, I can just show and prove. Meanwhile, the predator's coming down like rite of passage. I'm here to hunt. C collect souvenirs. I'm I'm gunning for y'all apex predators out here. So the predator's gonna do its thing. The predator does its thing, and this is the best predator movie since the first one. Easily, in my opinion, easily the best predator movie since the first one. Easily. All the all the AVP movies. The Predator and the Predators and the, you know, Predator 2 and the whatevers. This is the strongest installment since the Arnold Schwarzenegger one. I'm saying that with my full chest, rock solid. It's the best Predator movie since the original, in my opinion. I enjoyed it. Um, I had a good time with it. It was exciting. The action mattered. The Predator looked amazing. The Predator was doing some dope shit. It was dope to see the Predator's weapons be dated. So, you know, it wasn't as advanced as the uh, the later movies. It was dope to see that. It was still more advanced than what they had on Earth, but it was still of the time. You know what I'm saying? Prey was a good time. Prey was a good time, man. I'm giving Prey a strong, Rock solid. Four saxophones out of five, man. Shit, maybe even a four and a half. Maybe it can slide into a, a flaccid four and a half because I really don't have that many complaints about the movie. I really don't have any complaints about the movie. Because um, it, it was just dope. The Predator... The Predator was working. Nothing was easy for the Predator. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was struggling throughout the movie. Um... Yeah, man. Check out Prey if you can. It's on Hulu right now. If, you, if you're if you into the Predator franchise, you'll enjoy it. If you didn't like it since the first one, I think you should give this one a shot, and I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, and I'm glad they made it. I'm glad they took it back to 719, and yeah, I think it was dope. Definitely better than that last Predator movie we saw with Dude from This Is Us and... uh. You know, them other cats that was in. It was mad forgettable. And then they had the, the kid with uh, autism. Um, and they were trying to weaponize autism. It was something. That, it was, I don't know what the hell was going on in that last Predator, but it's definitely better than that. 1719. I, I keep saying 719. 1719. That was a good year, man. I was around in 1719. I was having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Predator. AV, man, AV. AVP is not better than Prey. Whoever said that, man, get, man, look out tomorrow. Look out. Get out of here. Please. Shout out to Sanaa Lathan that was in AVP, but come on, man. Cut the shit. Cut the shit, man. Come on. Don't do this. Don't do this. Anyway, y'all, uh, that's my review of Prey and Bullet Train, uh, both entertaining movies. Um, so check them out. If you can, if you ain't got nothing going, check them out. If you ain't got nothing to do, you want to go on a date, you want to get entertained, get you some popcorn, 
Check out Bullet Train in theaters. You want to be at home watching something exciting with some action? You know what I'm saying? Check out Prey. Have a good time, man. Wait, Enjoy did, yourself. Did you get the saxophones for Prey? I did. Huh? Oh, I didn't hear that. Where was you at? Man? I was right here. I was right I gave it a strong, solid four. I even made the noise in my fist and hand. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm talking about how you feel me. Um, anyway, I'm out of here. Uh, I want to thank y'all for pulling up in the chats where the patron saints are in here. Thank y'all for tuning in to the video on YouTube. Please give it a like, comment, comment and like. Let's get the, let's get the, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the algorithm, but the, you know, the engagement. Let's get my engagements up. Let's get the views up. Let's do all of that, man. I'm sick of y'all, man. Let's do it. Um, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Verbal Cardio. Um, we'll be back next week as usual, you know, giving y'all... Another episode of that verbal cardio. We out.